The phrases limited edition and special edition mean different things to different people. For some, it conjures up images of race-owned sports cars built for homologation. For others, though, it is much more depressing. Visions of your local Ford dealer putting a sunroof on a base model Escort and calling it the Sunrise Edition. While both these Vs are interesting in their own right, in this video I'll be focusing on the strangest special editions ever made. I won't include cars like the Panda Italia 90, the Polo Harlequin or the Felicia Fun because I feel like they're rather obvious choices. Starting with an odd trend that at least seven different manufacturers thought was a good idea, it's the jeans editions. Made most famous by the stripy VW Beetle jeans, these editions usually had denim clad seats and ties to jean manufacturers. Case in point, the Seat Marbella jeans. The Marbella itself is a rebadged Fiat Panda, and not a good one. The addition of denim seats and yellow headdress didn't do much to inspire sales. There were plenty of other similar editions that followed in the successful Beetle jeans denim clad footsteps. These included the Toyota Starlet, VW Polo, Chevy Chevette, Fiat 500, AMC Gremlin, and at least two different Peugeot 106s. Speaking of that small Peugeot, it had its fair share of special editions too. The most unique of these is definitely the 106 cartoon. From the outside it looked like any other 106, but one look at the interior revealed garish sheet fabrics and the best headrests ever fitted to a car, except for maybe the Suzuki Ignis Sport. The 106's sibling, the Citroen Saxo, also had a few odd specials of its own. The most famous of these is the Saxo Bic, made in collaboration with the pen manufacturer, for some reason. These cars had yellow detailing all over the car to mirror Bic's yellow pens, and the seatbelts were all different colours to represent the multicolour pens Bic sell. The latter edition meant that these cars looked like they've been put together using a bunch of different parts after a crash. It's not a good look. Another special Saxo was the counterintuitively named Saxo Scandal, later spawning the canvas roof to open Scandal. Notable for its risque advertising, mismatching seat patterns, and simply a funny name, this Saxo certainly tried to be different. It seems French manufacturers have a habit of making confusing additions, as before the 106, Peugeot made lots and lots of special 205s. I'm sure you've heard of the Inca, the Roland Garros, the Junior, the Lacoste. I'll stop there. Perhaps the most bizarre 205 of all was the 1FM, based on the 1.9 GTI. Only 25 of these stickered up hot hatches were made, intended to be given away as part of BBC Radio 1's 25th anniversary in 1992. That's where the 1FM name comes from, by the way. The 1FM was different from the GTI, in that it had 1FM stickers and details all around the car, an upgraded stereo system, most of the 1.9 option list ticked, and were only available in black. It's difficult to see who exactly was waiting for the 1FM to arrive in order to buy a 205 GTI, especially so late in the car's life. Music and sound were also common themes for special editions in the 80s and 90s, the 1FM being one example, but there were many others. Take the 1980 Fiat Ritmo sound for instance. The Ritmo, called the Strada here in the UK, didn't have a radio as standard. So for this special edition, Fiat put a Blaupunkt unit in, slapped a sticker on the back and called it a day. VW was more prolific in this market, releasing four different models as tie-ins with bands. These were the rather dismal Golf Pink Floyd, Golf Rolling Stones and Golf Bon Jovi, and the somewhat cool Polo G40 Genesis. I say the latter is cool not because I like their music, but because it is based on the supercharged Polo G40 rather than a tepid Mark III Golf. I'm also partial to purple cars, and VW's metallic purple, also seen on the Corrado, is a great one. Only one of these exists in the UK, as they were built to special order. A shame, really, when it looks this good. Of course, those who can't sing karaoke tend to shout, so next up is the Kia Pride Shout. Despite the loud name, this is yet another of the stickers and badges brigade that infested car manufacturers in the late 20th century. But flip back a decade or two and we see special editions mean something very different. Stripes. And nowhere was this out in force more than the Austin Allegro Equipe, from its lurid decals and optional vinyl roof, to its sporty alloys and strange advertising, the Akeep was every inch a car of the 70s. Perhaps a mistake, considering it released in 1979, at the tail end of the decade. It could be said that the Akeep was a direct response to the 1977 Ford Pinto Cruisin' Wagon, but since the two cars were never sold in the same market, it would be a rather foolish statement. The similarity is undeniable, however, for better or worse. Ford tried again with the mad stripes look a year later, 
with the Escort Sundowner van. It was based on the second generation Escort of Rally fame, but I don't think Ari Vatanen would be seen driving one of these on the Monte Carlo unless it was at gunpoint. Regular Fords have had sporty aspirations for years, however, from the Escort Eclipse, the 1.3 that wanted to be an XR3, through the KA Grand Prix, to the Transit MSRT of today. Because when you have a successful rally team, in this case Ford M Sport, it only makes sense for them to make a special body kit for a van. Not the Fiestas and Pumas they actually race, no, that would make too much sense. Instead, the faintly cryptic MSRT name is only applied to the Transit and the Ranger. MSRT, if you're wondering, stands for M Sport Road Technology, which sounds a bit like a posh name for tarmac. A car that could be genuinely described as sporty would be this pinstriped Lancia Y10, but not for the reason you might expect. No, underneath it isn't a Delta S4 or Integrale, it doesn't have a theme of V8, it isn't mid-engined, it isn't even fast. No, this Y10 is sporty because it has a sports company name on the bootlid. Look, just there. Filler. That's sporty, right? Right? Moving swiftly on, and in fact returning to the French makes. There seemed to have been a trend there in the 1990s for posh versions of small cars. The Clio Baccarat, the 306 Roland Garros, you know, that sort of thing. But a car that took this to the extreme was the Renault Twingo Lecoq of 1995. Built in part by the historic Lecoq coach builders, this special Twingo featured a Bugatti-style paint job, colour-coded alloy wheels, and the full wooden leather treatment inside. Luxurious it may have been in there, but performance-wise it was still a 90s hatchback at the end of the day, so hardly going to rival Rolls-Royce for comfort and refinement. What about something equally as 90s as the Twingo, but in a very different way? The Isuzu Vehicross was a controversial SUV, and that was putting it mildly. People hated the thing, so throwing a giant Iron Man logo onto a matte black bonnet was hardly going to help it sell. This wasn't the only Iron Man edition, but the others were both themed to the films of the same name. The first of these is the somewhat subtle Hyundai Kona Iron Man, twilling a nice exterior colour combo with an array of tacky Marvel decals across the car. The key fob also had the suit's mask on it, making it look like it belongs in one of those little tykes cars you see kids ride about in. The other Iron Man edition was far less subtle than the Kona, and was also available as a Captain America edition. The Renault Quid Superhero editions had decals and stripes galore, almost looking like amateur rally cars in the process. We're almost at the end of the video, so now is a good time to talk about run-out specials. These are additions to keep an old car selling at the end of its life, usually being the final versions of that generation produced. Famous examples include the VW Scirocco Storm and this, the Ford Cortina Crusader. Built in 1982, just as the Sierra was about to be introduced, the Crusader was the usual pinstripe and badges affair, but with a difference. Whereas most lacklustre special editions struggle to increase sales, the Crusader shocked Ford and the UK car buying public with just how well it sold. 30,000 Crusaders were built, as buyers were apprehensive of the radical new Sierra, preferring the traditional style of the outgoing Cortina. Sometimes run-out specials are given a catchy name to stick in a buyer's mind, as was the case for these two, the Renault 4 Bye Bye and the Fiat Maluk Happy End. I can't decide which car I prefer name-wise, but the marketing teams clearly knew that people saw both these cars very fondly. Now there are two cars I haven't mentioned yet in this video that are synonymous with the term Special Edition, one of which even having to rely on them for the last 15 years of its life. These of course are the Mini and the Mini Metro. Both cars were available in hundreds of editions and here are a few. Principles. Advantage. Tahiti. Designer. Rio. Red Hot. Jet Black. 1275 Sport. Park Lane. Ritz. Equinox. Sidewalk. Neon. Studio 2. Uh, this is awkward. 